my life before Christ was I had uh, three younger brothers. I lived with my parents and three younger brothers, went to school. The highlight <clears throat> of, my, of our year to me was a visit to my grandfather's. It was like, uh, I suppose it was a family reunion because there were a lot of people there. And <clears throat> we lived in St. Bernard, Ohio. So we had water and inside bathroom and electric and grandmother and grandfather had none. They lived in the Eastern Kentucky mountains. So anyway, we, it was like a different world, and I loved it. I really enjoyed that. And I wanted <clears throat> to bring out, uh, when, you th when I thought about an early Christian influence, I, did not, I was not taken to Sunday school and church. <clears throat> and, but my grandfather, well, I know he was a Christian because when... At night, he would read the Bible out loud. That's when I heard the scriptures. So, because of circumstances that we cannot change, I did not get to see him very often. And our family life was shattered. We, I lost my mother at a young age, and that changed everything. After we lost mother, it was difficult. My father really had a hard time. And somehow we began, we, we began to go to church. And so I went to Sunday school and I church, went to church for a while. <clears throat> and this was a church in, in Cincinnati because he had moved us. And uh, so, you know, I'm sure I heard the Bible stories and listened to the teachers and the preacher, and the man, the preacher's name was Hillard. His last name was Hillard. To me, this was a large church. It was an older church. I don't know how we started going there. I'm sure somebody invited Dad. Um, but anyway, we sat close to the front as a Sunday school group with the Sunday school teacher. <clears throat> And I don't know what the sermon was, but all of, it was just like you turned the light on. You need Jesus. And I didn't have a lot of background, <clears throat> but I knew. I knew, I did need him. And <clears throat> so I went forward and I don't know what I said to the preacher, but I made known to him that I knew I needed Jesus. <clears throat> so it was probably a few weeks after that, my father also accepted Christ and we were baptized together. So that was a good memory. Father Emil P. Rykow. And I, uh, I was uh, probably in the seventh or eighth grade by this time. <clears throat> and uh, he wore a long black robe and he spoke with an accent. So, you know, I remember that as a child. So we 
he gave the questions, we gave the scripture answers. So that was a learning. I'm learning. And I guess my biggest, personally, this was a time when, when I prayed a lot. I didn't have other people. I didn't have family around me. I wanted to go to church. I went to church. I needed to be in church. And the church body means a lot to me. So, you know, and I wanted my children to know it was important. So, <clears throat> I was always able to take them and we always went. Well, I wanted them to have, hopefully, a stable home. And I think we did that. Uh, of course, we were able to. First situation, it wasn't possible. <clears throat> I, I wanted them to know that it was important to me. For them to know the Lord, I ask a lot to be allowed to raise my children. Through prayer? Yes. And God bless me. And now I have great grandchildren. <clears throat> so, he gave abundantly. When I became a Christian, I was really a babe, period, in spiritually. And I had a lot to learn. But as God worked it out, I had teaching and teaching from the body of Christ. That's important. We have an important job. Also, it uh, the body taught me, but then it gave me a place to serve. And I hope I have fulfilled that along the way. Lonnie had to be gone a lot on Sundays. He he just had to. That was his work. But that didn't interfere with us coming at all. And uh, this was the closest church and I always you know, I just felt like I should join or I mean that I could come. I didn't shop around. I did not shop around. <laughs> when people say they shop around, I think okay, I just didn't have to. I mean, I came and I was contented or happy or whatever, you, however you put it. And I liked, I just liked it. I've always felt welcome at the churches that I have been to. That I'm sure they've all contributed to my spiritual learning and teaching and giving me a place to serve. So, you know, these were my family. And they really are. Prayer is it's just your stabilizer or what, what holds you together sometimes. Um, and it's always available. It's always available. And that, that is a big thing to me. 
it's always available. And it's always, uh, you know, as long as we have our capacities, it's something that we can do. And there's a lot of situations that we cannot change, even if we really want to. We can't. And we have to accept them. And we have to ask God's help in being able to accept them. And I'm, I'm sure I've done that a lot of times. I mean, I have, I have had to depend on him so many times. Needed to depend on him. And I can. And I know I can. Because there have been a lot of testing times. And he promised he would be with us. And he will prepare a place for us when we leave here. And I'm sure of that. I want my church family to know. I love them. And we all need Jesus. <laughs>